Yeah, and I think let's in our kind of final five minutes here, let's talk about the Biden infrastructure plan. Because again, as I mentioned, you focused on industry and energy. And again, this is in 2014. Yeah. You Republicans, as, as we've talked about a lot, have come a long way in terms of their willingness to acknowledge, yes, I think you know, human men are, are causing global warming to some extent. Uh, it doesn't mean you're not a skeptic. It means it means just that let's let's have a no regrets policy where let's you know assume that we're contributing to global warming and let's not add to it. Let's let's have a set of policies that are going to make the environment cleaner regardless of the threat level of what it turns out to be. Um, but you were you were ahead of this back in 2014, right? I think we've seen that what the Trump administration did to allow greater use of, of uh, you know permitting. Yep, natural gas. Greenhouse gas emissions went down. Greenhouse gas emissions went down after we withdrew from the Paris Agreement. So I think you know I think we're ahead of the curve. But as as you and I, I know you're working on the infrastructure kind of discussions behind the scenes with other members. What is your take on on how Biden is framing this approach? What is the? Well, I mean, I, I, I'm as you know, I'm I'm solidly committed to uh, to building infrastructure, whether it's roads, bridges, waterways, uh, even broadband. I mean, uh, all of those uh, you know, critical uh, pieces of infrastructure that connect people to make the economy work um, are are very, very important part of, of, of what the government is involved with. I would argue in many cases more on the state level than on the federal level, but, uh, you know, the federal government is, has had its hand in there for a while and, uh, and, and, and you know, has some role to play. Although, again, I would argue that this should be done more at the state level than federal level. Having said that, you know, one of the things that the federal government has done and that um, and continues to do to impede infrastructure is regulation. Uh, it, you know, Joe Biden, number one, has expanded the definition of infrastructure beyond any rational reason. Right. And I think, Candle, I think there's enough Democrats to recognize that as much as I, you know, I, I'm for the family, you know, paid family leave is not infrastructure. I mean, that's just not, it isn't. Uh, and, and so you, you can't just throw everything you want in there and call it infrastructure. Uh, so that's number one. Number two is I haven't really heard much from the administration about you know, if you recall the stimulus package that Biden was sort of overseeing back in, you know, 2009 and 2010. You uh, led the oversight effort on that. Everybody well, was- you know, remember shovel ready projects. Well, it turned out shovel ready projects, you know, are probably still being built with infrastructure money from the from 2009. Why? Because of regulation. You know, you can't you can't say I'm for building infrastructure and then allow projects to be held up for 10 years uh, because of antiquated rules that have no, uh, you know, that, that you can look back at and say, okay, this isn't working. You know, we wanted to do this to make sure we protected the environment, but it's actually holding back environmental pro- projects, right? Projects that actually improve the environment, they're holding them back because not in my backyard. Uh, or, you know, someone has, you know, a, a legal, you know, some legal complaint about a company or about whatever. So we've, we, we need to, uh, we need to address the issue of, uh, of, of regulatory review. And, you know, we don't want to obviously trample over people's rights, but we don't want to create the opportunity, which is clearly the case, that people abuse those rights uh, for purposes of, of, of uh, their own financial gain or for stalling projects that they just don't agree with, but that are in the public interest and what the public wants to do. So uh, that, that's the area that I have a huge question mark as to whether Joe Biden will stand up and lead on that, and to date he is not. Yeah, and what else? What else could Biden do to make it bipartisan? What could he pull out from the current iteration of infrastructure to get Republican support? Well, look, I think if he did a traditional infrastructure bill, I, you know, I've listened to a lot of my former colleagues out there saying, you know, hey, look, we're, you know, we're we're open to uh, to infrastructure, we're, you know, roads, bridges, you know waterways, ports, things like that, uh, broadband. Uh, and, and frankly, a lot of them have said we're open to, uh, to, uh, to debt financing some of it because, you know, candidly, if you're going to debt finance anything, you debt, you debt finance a project that's going to be, have a youthful life of 50 years. You know, it makes sense to debt finance that. Uh, so they aren't saying you have to pay for all of it. They aren't saying that you have to, uh, you know, that, that we shouldn't do this. Uh, but, 
um, right now the president's going for everything. I and I, I think you're hearing at least I'm. I believe you're hearing from Democrats saying, yeah, we, we may have to break it apart. I know Joe Manchin has said that, but I think others are, are sort of warming to that idea. And if they do break it apart into its component parts, uh, infrastructure is actually what would be considered a traditional infrastructure bill. I think you'll get a lot of Republican support uh, and hopefully bipartisan support for a program that's not just going to spend money tying up things in court, uh, and and spending our money on judge on, uh, on lawyers and and uh, and courts, but on actual projects. And, and to be clear, tax increases are not part of traditional infrastructure. No, well, I mean, yeah, they they haven't been. But I think I, I'll be honest here. I think Republicans, you know, given get, at least I could be wrong, given the debt, I mean, may may look at as they have been in the past, user fees. Sure. Uh, ha have always been uh, been something that you know whether it was a gas tax or whether it was you know other types of, of fees that are uh, a company infrastructure uh, private public partnership there's all sorts of ways to finance these things uh, mm -hmm. and I'm not someone who says well the government shouldn't you know raise any money to do that I think that again is somewhat irresponsible but it's not a corporate tax increase it's not a capital gains it's not that's not tied to the infrastructure itself. So I think financing it, whether it's through, you know, some sort of carbon tax or energy tax or something, because if you do a gas tax, you know, five years from now, what percentage of the, of the, uh, uh, of, of the users of the road are going to be consuming gas? I mean, they may be, you know, electric vehicle use is obviously going up dramatically. And so they, they get to use the roads for free. Uh, so that, that's why, you know, looking at different ways in which to finance this are, are probably on the table, uh, but not a general tax increase. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you know, and we're not we're not pro, you know, we're skeptical of the carbon tax. I think we yeah, should I'm, market, I'm like not advocating I'm not advocating, I'm not advocating for any of these, by the way. I'm just saying that those those are the things that I think could be on the table because they're related to the actual expenditure of funds. But yeah, but, but you're saying it's wholesale. Let's use this moment to dramatically increase taxes. Non, yeah. non. I, it certainly will be a non-starter among Republicans as well. Expanding, you know, expanding what infrastructure means. I think something more traditional has in the past has been supported by Republicans. I think there's a lot of Democrats who would like to pass something, and I, I, I hope that Republicans aren't to the point where they, you know, they are. Uh, as the Democrats were for four years, they won't support anything that Donald Trump did. Sure. Uh, although in the end, they actually did. They supported, uh, you know, the uh, the justice reform, uh, the you know, the legal reform stuff. So, you know, I hope we're not as uh, as dug in that, that anything that Joe Biden wants, whether we like it or not, we're not going to vote for. Uh, I I think we need to, you know, we need to do things to to help the country, and I think this this would be one that could could do so. Great. Well, Rick, thank you so much. You've been very generous with your time. I appreciate your leadership on this and so many fronts. And you can follow us at c3solutions.org and also our news magazine, c3newsmag.com. And there's a section on there called Voices, where you can see a collection of all the right voices. Uh, we'll be posting this uh, interview on Facebook and our, our podcast and look forward to joining you next time. Well, let me before you before you sign off, let me just give a, a little plug for C3 and, and the work that you guys are doing. And uh, I, it's it it is important that conservatives have ideas. You know, you and I have been working on healthcare for a long, long time. And I think one of the reasons we lost the election in 2020 was because the president wouldn't embrace a, a health reform measure that showed how we were going to actually cover people and make lives better for people. And uh, particularly during a pandemic, that to not support something like that, to me, was unconscionable. Uh, and, you know, we had groups, think tanks and others together trying to try to get uh, a consensus. I think we actually did get a consensus, but we couldn't get the president to, to support it. We couldn't get Republican Congress to, to go out there and really uh, vocally get behind it. And, um, mm -hmm. and that's that's a problem. We can't be, as you mentioned right at the beginning of the show, we can't just be the party of no. We can't be the party of not them. Uh, we, you know, Americans want to know, you know, what are you going to do to solve the problems that are real? And, and so, uh, the fact that C3 is stepping forward and providing, you know, the background information and and the support for, you know, intelligent solutions that that are going to make our, our environment better, whether we like it or not, 
if you're under the age of 40, you have been schooled that global warming is the existential threat to the country. Uh, in, it's, I, it, I don't believe it is. I don't think it's an existential threat to the country, but uh, young people do and, and, and young Republicans do. And so again, we either face the reality that, that people care about this and want us to do something, or we face the reality that we're not gonna be making policy uh, in Washington for a long, long time. And I don't think, I don't think that's a good thing for the country. Well, and, and as we spelled out at the beginning, you do care. Like you, you, you got your bees, you got your land, and we believe in leaving the world better off than we found it. So, so there's no doubt that we care. And I appreciate that and uh, look forward to continuing the work and uh, best of luck.